Hello my friends, it's your old pal Jordan the Lion coming to you from Kensington here in London, England. And if you know this area and you know the word Kensington, you know exactly what we're gonna vlog today. Everybody has been asking me to do this. So we're gonna do it today. We're gonna go see the house and the official grave marker stone of one of the greatest showmen in rock and roll history. A man who, when he was on stage, you couldn't look away. He was just that captivating and yet, his very first performance ever, he did with his back to the audience performing Jailhouse Rock by Elvis Presley. We are right around the corner from the death home and the last place that Freddie Mercury called home. Let's go. Well, you can't see much beyond this very, very, very tall gate with spikes on top of it, but that house beyond there was Freddie's house and that he loved that house. That was, uh, now it's the home of Mary Austin, who was his longtime love. Um, he considered her his live-in wife or his uh, common-law wife, but they were just so great friends that Freddie really felt like she was the only person he ever really considered a friend. And um, so his jaunt into music was not a common one. <clears throat> Freddie actually, never really had the dreams of being a, a singer. He got into it much later in life. He went and saw a band called Smile, who had um, a couple of the members of what would become his band, Queen. They were in that group, Freddie went to see them, and not being in the group, he was actually singing all of their harmony parts at their show. And um, so this was kind of a spark that led him to believe that, hey, I, I, maybe I should do music, maybe I should get into this. And um, so eventually he would do his own band and the band wouldn't be quite what he wanted so he would um, eventually find out that Smile broke up and he would get um, the members of Smile, Brian May, to uh, come and join the band with him and they called it Queen. So Roger Taylor and Brian May joined the band they found John Deacon and that became Queen. And Queen was kind of a risky name at the time because everybody knew really what that meant here in London. That was like kind of a um, homosexual term or it was something that was kind of a derogatory term, but um, Freddie liked the name and that's what they went with. Now what's sad to me is that I feel like a lot of people really have gotten all over the Freddie Mercury bandwagon because of Bohemian Rhapsody. But they really should be on the Freddie Mercury bandwagon because his music was amazing, his voice was incredible. He, he actually believed that um, the reason that he could sing and hit so many notes was that he thought he had four extra teeth in the back of his th mouth and that that stretched his palate and he believed that that helped him attain those. So when you hear him do all these wonderful songs like Somebody to Love and Bohemian Rhapsody and... God, I wish we could see more crazy little thing called love and everything. That was, you know, that great voice that brought those songs to life. And uh, they still say his last performance was considered the greatest performance of all time. And they definitely captured that in the Bohemian Rhapsody movie. Even though I'm not a big fan of the movie, I think it was a well done movie, but I really, really wanted to see more history of Queen. You know, like how the band formed his relationship with Queen, not so much his personal life, but sadly, if we're going to talk personal life, we do have to say that, um, you know, in 1987, um, Freddie was diagnosed with AIDS, not HIV, AIDS. And um, so they knew his time was limited, and even though word would leak out to the press that he had this, he would deny it. And he actually didn't ever come out until um, the day before he died. He basically... Um, made a statement saying that he had it and then he passed away the next day at the age of 45. Now what's really sad is that um, Queen finally, you know, I feel like maybe even with Wayne's World started to get their due, people started to realize how great their music really was because they did well when they were around, when they were performing, but not as well as they should have. And a lot of people believe that the reason that that was was because they thought that, um, Freddie had changed his look 
um, at one point <clears throat> and he went to what was in the homosexual community called a clone look which was short hair a mustache he got rid of his long hair got rid of that rock and roll look and um, a lot of people believe that was kind of what stalled some of their sales for me i love news of the world sheer heart attack um, a night at the opera day at the races those are all phenomenal albums and that's about as much of the house as we're going to be able to see unfortunately so even though while Freddie was alive, Mary did fall in love and did move on, and it apparently did hurt his feelings, but um, he did always consider her his closest friend, and so when he passed away, he left the house and uh, quite a bit of his estate to Mary, and I believe Mary still lives there and had actually lived there with her family, so it's not just a house that she owns, it's a house that she has used. And here you can see they have... Uh, a big sheet of plastic in front of the door so people can't do graffiti but people leave little messages for Freddy. I love Queen. So I guess this is as close as we can get to taking a picture in front of Freddie Mercury's house. I guess we can take a picture in front of the door. Here on the other side you can see there's all kinds of razor wire. And Freddie's musical life was not just confined to Queen. He did do solo albums during that time um, that he was alive too, but nothing quite has been remembered quite like his Queen days. And I think that's really obvious. I mean, it was a four piece that had phenomenal songs. I mean, it was somewhere between rock and roll, metal, show tune, <laughs> um, Tim Penale. I mean, he kind of, they really mixed everything and they had that phenomenal guitar sound of Brian May's. Freddie's incredible voice. Roger Taylor had this amazing backing voice. I mean, they just, they really had everything on top of being phenomenal showmen on stage. So now we're gonna make our way off to the cemetery and see if we can't find that memorial for Farouk Bolsara, Freddie Mercury's real name. So I just walked past another blue plaque and I don't know the whole story of Michael McCowan theater, but I did have to kinda chuckle a little bit right away because uh, this was a drama school here it says the oldest drama school in the UK and it's called Lambda <laughs> it's about a block away from Freddie Mercury's flat is the oldest drama school in the UK and I believe Brian May is the one that introduced Freddie to Mary Austin he was very very instrumental also in getting Bohemian Rhapsody made he was uh, very vocal in who was going to portray Freddy. I know at one point, Sasha Baron Cohen, Borat, was supposed to be Freddy, and then they decided to go in a different direction. I wondered as I watched that movie what Freddie Mercury himself would think of the movie and the performances and everything. I wonder if he would have approved of that movie being made. The reason I kind of wonder that is because people like Frank Zappa didn't even want to be remembered for anything other than just the music alone. He didn't even have a headstone. Yeah, he just said, I don't need to be remembered as long as the records survive and even if they don't, who cares? I would have loved to include the Wembley Stadium as part of this because Freddie made such a big impact there, but it's not the same Wembley. They rebuilt it. I think the true measure of how great Queen was is that whenever I've met anyone in my life, I don't think I've ever met anybody that told me they didn't like Queen's music. And in fact, in a couple of days, we have been invited to go to a concert, and the drummer of that band has told me that Queen was his favorite band. That would be Eric Singer, the drummer of KISS, for the last, what, 25, 30 years. I just love the flats here. Look, there's even a lion. Check that out. Actually realized we're gonna be passing right by the death site of another famous musician so we'll stop there along the way to the cemetery nice Look at that old gothic church st. John's Church was built in 1845 in the early English Gothic style by John Hargrave Stevens and George Alexander this site on the summit of Notting Hill had formerly been a viewpoint for spectators at the center of the Hippodrome race course huh So there used to be a hotel right here back in the early 70s. 
and it was at this hotel, at this address, it would have been 22 Lansdowne Crescent, that Jimi Hendrix was found dead. Now that's a really bizarre story. I don't, you know, I still don't really know what to make of it. The official story is that he did drugs, drank wine, and choked on his own vomit. But people that knew Jimmy said that that wasn't Jimmy. Jimmy was like not a guy who abused drugs. He was somebody who, you know, if somebody offered him drugs might take a hit, but didn't abuse them. And um, yeah, it was sad. He was here with his girlfriend. He had woken up, played guitar, and, um, and then next thing you know, he's dead. Now the speculation by a lot of people is that Jimmy had a kind of a crooked manager um, who saw that, you know, whether Jimmy was alive or dead, this guy would make money because he had a bulk of Jimmy's publishing. And um, so a lot of people have speculated that that guy had a heavy hand in whatever it was that took Jimmy's life at this address. But I guess we will really never know because that man died a few years later and it was never really heavily investigated. Although there are documentaries that go into it that do back up the claim that it does seem very suspicious. So it would've been right here where Jimi Hendrix was found dead. All right, back on our route. Wow, check out the architecture on that. I love that. Wow, that is their fire station. Look, it's a space invader. I wouldn't want to swim in that, jeez. Well, here we are. Very interesting cemetery. Now, as I understand it, Freddie didn't want particularly a uh, ceremony or a grave or anything, so I'm not sure that his ashes are here. Where the plaque is, I read online that people have said that that usually means that the ashes were scattered in that area, but I believe it was a, uh, a promise to Freddie that Mary would never reveal where his ashes were. And who knows, she very well may have them buried with her when she passes away, but I do know she did have a little commemoration ceremony out here for this, very low key. So we'll find it and pay our respects. Kind of interesting how people decide to do their plots here. This one has stained glass. I was walking by this and I just stopped to read it because there was so much written on there. And the more I read it, it says, Joseph Manton, he's a great artist in the art of firearms that ever the world produced as the founder and the father of the modern gun trade and as a most scientific inventor. Huh, quite a life he led. I'm still looking for it. Here's the mausoleum of the Duke of Cambridge. There's a sleeping lion. Here's the mausoleum of General Sir John Atchison. Kind of interesting about this cemetery is a lot of the headstones will say, went to sleep, you know, or, or basically tells the manner of death. Look at this one. This is an angel with the arms and the head off. I think I have an answer. So originally there was a plaque here that was signed uh, Farouk Bosara with Freddie Mercury's birth and death dates. And it said, forever and always with you, my love. Signed M. But apparently a, uh, a news magazine reported when someone found it, it used to be right here, and um, they said like a week later it was removed. So, but I know this has to be it. I see the queen crown there, so. He didn't want anybody to know where he was buried, so I highly doubt that he was buried here. 
think this was probably just a memorial, but who knows? Some of his friends have said they think he's buried at his home under the cherry tree. Some people believe back in Zanzibar, who knows? The original placard was right here, right in between these two names. My original thought on coming out here was that if there were a plaque here, then it, you know, I took that as kind of a sign that it's okay to come visit. But then once I got out here and I actually found that and there was no plaque there, I started looking online, reading up and saw that it was removed. Now I understand it's, you know, I guess they didn't want anybody to know. So that nobody would come and try and do anything disrespectful. Well, I think we're gonna call it a day here from London. Have a great night, everyone. Go listen to some Queen. Enjoy Freddie Mercury's music, the genius that was in there, the beautiful voice, the great theatrics on stage. Don't let him be forgotten. Have a great night. We'll see you all tomorrow. Goodbye. Thank mm -hmm. you.